Good morning, beautiful people. It is 6.42 in the morning. That is where we camped. We were tr we've been trying to leave earlier, basically, to avoid the mozzies. I have got my uh, bug net on, gifted from those fabulous people we met yesterday uh, who are ultra running the length of the Outer Hebrides. So actually, I think it's okay. I haven't seen any bugs yet, but I've got it in preparation. Um, yeah, so it's lovely. We did The alarm went off at 5.45. That was tough to get moving, but you know, 6.45, we're, we're, we are at it. Back on the Hebridean way. in the morning we've done almost four and a half miles and on today it's the majority at the start is all road walking we had that nice little beach, sec beach section which was only you know 0.3 of a mile or something otherwise it's been very hard surface we're going to be walking along this road for quite a while and can you see in the distance there's sort of a mountain uh, you might not because the sun is shining and we're going to be summiting that which is the highest point in the Outer Hebrides, which is very cool. Another also really interesting fact is there's a path which leads to the summit of the mountain, but it's not actually on any OS map. So that's why it's good that I'm using the Hiker app because it will direct us the exact way that we need to go. And obviously there's a button that you can press um, while you're using the Hiker app, which tells you exactly where you are. And there's also a measurement tool option. So I measured from where we are to the road which is like another mile and then I measured from the road to the summit 1.6 miles so it's a really really useful tool to be using so we are 6.3 miles in it's five past nine we've walked along this path there's a beautiful lake here Adelaide's going to be changing out her socks so she's going to be putting her wet socks on uh, because we're now starting the ascent up up this path up here which is the one which isn't on the os map but to be honest it's actually really obvious i didn't think it was going to be obvious i thought it was going to be like a hidden path but obviously you're just paying attention because if you were in flow you probably want to carry on walking but you can see up here um the post heading can you see the post can you see the post the post right there see the post heading up okay let's start the climb So we have just reached the summit and this is the, the tree point. We've got the cairn over there. Now, uh, I said before that this is, might be the highest point in, uh, in the Outer Hebrides. I think that was a lie. I think it's the highest point on this island, to be honest, because if you look over there, those mountains look higher and then those mountains look higher as well. But if you look so sort of straight ahead, we're going to be descending down this way and out in the distance, you can see um, one of the causeways which we're going to be following so there's a lot of there's basically during the when you're walking in the Outer Hebrides there's 10 islands that you go through you're going to take two ferry journeys and then the rest of the connections to the islands is via causeway um, so yeah it's just good to know but hello trig point hello Ken and then direction down 
So what's really interesting is we're just heading down from the top of this mountain, which was 124 meters, Rue Abal Hau. And we are the currently the blue dot. And we're trying to either walk on the red line or the green line. And we are like, just <laughs> if you look out, there isn't an obvious path to follow to get down. So this is why it's so useful having a GPS on your phone. And my phone is actually in airplane mode at the moment, so it's not actually draining my battery, which is fantastic. There's also, can you see on here, there's um, you, where the blue circle with a tiny triangle on top. That tiny triangle shows us which direction that my phone is pointing. So at least with this, I know that I can point it this way. We're probably gonna go about another five meters and then we're gonna be on the approx approximate path that we need to follow to get down and descend to head down to um, the causeway so we're walking on this next stretch of green we are back on the path and as you can see we've got a post right here that we can follow and then you can see looking at the screen the blue dot which direction do we need to go this way and you can see the next post in the distance and you can also see this rough outline of path it is very faint and sometimes it's not that easy to see the path through the moors and you've got to be careful as well that they're not just like animal tracks or something but we will Head on this way. Let's go. We were doing so well, walking along, following a path, following the post. Now the post, to be fair, didn't have the Hebridean Way sign on. But because we were just like chatting, we made an assumption which was wrong, that we were heading in the right direction. Because suddenly we like we looked up and there was posts still going this way. But from the from the G they didn't say Hebridean Way on them. But we know we needed to head this way. So now we're sort of like freestyling over the bog to try and get to the road which is here to go to the left. And it's just quite the thing that was it's type quite time consuming it's just trying to find the best route the best path i mean like our feet are already wet so it's not that but sometimes there's these really uh very deep sort of more lakey sections not lakey that's the wrong word uh not just muddy oh god oh god Ugh. um which you obviously want to try and avoid as much as possible um but we're making progress it's just slow our goal was ideally to have done 10 miles by 12 o'clock that would be great but it is now uh six minutes to 11 and we're only at 7.7 .7 miles so yeah long way to go that last section was very confusing we actually came out by this gate but then oh so maybe the post would have carried on round here very strange not sure i like that section a huge amount Anyway, we are moving on to Grimsey. Grimsey? Grimsey, 2.1 miles. So we're gonna head down this way and join the main road and get on the causeway. We are running out of water though, so we do need to get a nice little resupply at some point. Walking along. Walk yeah. <laughs> Bridge to causeway. Causeway to island something to be aware of these some of these roads are single track roads with passing places and so we're walking on it and there is not much place to stand like there's very little uh space so obviously just be very careful when the car's coming along one of the things that i like to do is basically just stand up and basically pause and wait for the car to drive past but to be honest i mean the driver obviously they can't go anywhere because it's so friggin narrow um but this one has you can see them one thing I would say, drivers in the Outer Hebrides, absolutely amazing, so respectful. They all move over onto the other side of the road. You probably see me in other videos, like the Camino Portuguese, where I'm like walking along, like, oh my God, can the cars get any closer to me? This is really quite scary, because especially when they've got space on the other side and they're not moving over on the Outer Hebrides. If they can move over, they move over. Everyone waves to you everybody that we've asked for water so far is like oh of course you know no problem so it's been yeah super lovely because even this car is like slowing down massively like how respectful is that that's really lovely thank you nice wave as well i really like it when cars slow down this one didn't 
but nine times out of ten, they're very good. We finished the causeway walking and the road walking section and after stopping for some lunch and drying our tents we are now back on the moors and the sun has just been beating down it is blue skies it is phenomenal and what we're thinking is it's really sort of helped to dry out like a lot of these bogs and they've also these people have very kindly put um, boardwalks in over the wetter sections so fingers crossed <laughs> i don't want to jinx it but this has been very pleasant walking so far no wet feet i mean it's still it looks boggy but it's actually it's quite sturdy so yeah i mean just incredible views all the way around us what a stunning 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 day it is 2 37 in the afternoon done 24,503 steps uh, so around 13 miles so yeah we're doing okay doing okay team what's really good on this section is what they've done to sort of build up this walkway down the center is they've dug sort of a trench on one side of the walkway and a trench on the other side of the walkway and what they've obviously done is dug it out to build it on here to make this a path which is out of the bogginess and so you can sort of see how it continues on down which actually makes walking a hell of a lot easier um yeah so you you know very easy to navigate when you know you're on the path feet are dry ish there are still sometimes little muddy sections like this but again not too bad not too bad at all so we've got about two miles to go and i'm hoping that we get to the roadway by about four o'clock that is our that is our mini goal and how we're breaking down the sections we're now making a transition from sort of this the the soft mud boggy path to a pebbly stone path and you can see sort of how far it carries on so sort of down here then swings around to the left before going around the corner so yeah slightly different way of walking feet are not going to get wet on these pebbles a little bit harder on your feet but we can deal with that Hey team, so just finished the last section. I just wanna show you, so what we do, I've come into the Hiker app here and I'm gonna press this button on the bottom left and you can see where the blue dot is. So this is where I'm currently sat at the moment. So we've got this tiny little section to where the yellow is, which is gonna take us to the road. Now at the moment, currently at the bottom is the measurement mode is on. So I'm gonna take that off by clicking on the cross button on the bottom right. Now the line's gone back to red and I'll just bring my knees together and I can zoom zoom out and you can see where we are now I just want to measure the next section so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus button on the bottom right hand corner and you can see the second box down it says measurement tool so we click on the measurement tool I'm going to zoom in I want to click to where we are so click on the blue dot and I want to see where we want to get to which is all the way up here by this flag so I'm just going to click down there that's the finish now because I clicked on that flag that flag is like stage seven so hiker actually breaks it down into individual stages but if I just scroll that bit down you can again see on the bottom the measurement tool and it's telling us that we've got 8.5 miles to go roughly it's going to take about three hours and it also says it's about 522 feet of elevation so that's just something to bear in mind so that's just super useful um for me as well okay we're just here in lucky port yep. shoreline gallery so the path takes you um, round across the moor and across a wee stream and you'll come out at langus lodge and come round and there's the standing stones 
and the track comes round over the side of the hill and drops down into Langish Woodland. So there we've got Hercules the bear. Oh, cool. So that's worth a wee detour. Yeah. And if you're looking for somewhere nice to camp, we go through, we've got like a mini rock cutting, like a mini Grand Canyon. Oh, amazing. So you, you come, um, well, actually, the, the path that you'll be taking um, rises up just above that at the quarry. Yeah. And then just along here, there's a wee slip. It's really pretty there. Oh, you perfect. Know. So that'll be a good wild camping now. That would be a nice wild camping spot. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. If you don't make it all the way into Loch Mann. Yeah, I'm starting to think we're not going to make it all the way over there. Oh, so this might, the yeah, so this might be a good, per good perfect place. Or so. Oh, fabulous. Thank you. It's uh, 4.15 and... We are sort of quite desperate for water, so we popped into Shoreline Stoneware Pottery and Gallery and just got chatting to the lovely lady who runs it, and she gave us all that information about the map. And I'll just give you a quick little demonstration of what they've got in here. But like, look at these colours and these paintings. Like, how amazing is this? They also have all this uh, ceramics as well. Incredible. Sell loads of stuff, which is beautiful. Yeah. So, like the traditional oil burners. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to have some of this fudge as well, because this is incredible stuff. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> the laughing you're hearing in the background is Adelaide wetting herself. Because I thought there was midgy... Oh, oh, I thought it was midgies coming at me. And so I put my, uh, my head net on. But apparently there's nothing here, and actually I can't really see. And it's like 40 degrees. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she finds it hysterical. <laughs> no more sugar for you. Yeah. She's on a sugar high. We just had fudge. Oh. Okay, let's get walking. The trail is way marked, but I just wanted to show you this as an example. So we uh, we walked along this trail all along here, it's super clear of where we're going, and we can see a marker there, a trail pole there. But the question is, are we going up to the left or down to the right? And then this is when having GPS becomes really helpful. You click on your GPS, two seconds later, it shows your location and we know we need to head down to the right, which is great. Lead on Adelaide, lead on. Oh yeah. So we're, we're, you know, we're doing the hike on the cheap, looking to wild camp in most places. And if we were gonna stay in accommodation, we'd probably look to stay in a hostel more than anything else. But if you did have a larger budget, there are a lot of what look like very nice hotels and restaurants, which are, oh my God, it smells amazing. <laughs> it smells insanely good. Wow. Oh, we're just gonna stand here and smell. Um, but yeah, sorry. So what I was saying is basically there's lots of different options. Like this is right on the Hebridean Way. Boom, you could stop off here. I mean, that would be incredible. That smells amazing. Okay, we're gonna have to walk past this pretty quickly because we're not staying here. And we've got some sort of like, or I've got some sort of like tuna pasta meal for dinner. Um, yeah, onwards. Oh, hold on a sec. So we just walked through the forest to see the bear and ready in three oh that adelaide's in the way shift your booty one two three here is the bear this is hercules let's read about the bear hercules 1974 to 2001 went missing on 24th of august 1980 found north youth september 1980 carved by ian Ch calmers there's the bear and size adelaide can you hold that bad boy i'm five foot nine Okay. Hey! <laughs> oh, nice bear. Okay. Oh, big stop. And then what's this? Oh, Hercules the bear lies sleeping here, watching over his beloved islands, resting in peace. Oh, it's 5.47. We went to see the bear. Great, Hercules, love it, great, got a photo. And then it's just suddenly like the midges have appeared. Put my midgy net on, and like, how the hell are they getting inside the net? I'm like, I'm sealed. Oh God, now I'm starting to itch. And I, I sprayed myself with the smidge, smudge, whatever you call it. I've got it on my backpack, I've got it on my shoes, I've got it on my blooming face net. They are everywhere. Okay, keep calm. It's only midges, it's all good. Right, we're walking back down, getting onto the road. Hopefully there'll be a bit of a breeze on the road and it'll blow the midges away. Ooh. 
So we just walked through the Langas Woods. There we were. Welcome to Langas Woods. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, now we're heading down to the road. Um, this is a bit of a long road walk now through, for about five miles, but um, on the road, you've obviously got the road, but there's actually a path on the left-hand side that you can walk on as well. So I'm just hoping it's a little bit softer than tarmac. I sort of, um, I just can't, I just can't bear to see if the midges are still there or not. Okay. It's 6 p.m. now, and where our goal for today was Loch Maddy, which is five miles away, five mile road walk, or, you know, semi road walk on tarmac. However, we don't think we're quite gonna make it. So we are gonna walk and we're just gonna keep our eyes peeled for a nice wild camping spot. Hopefully with a bit of a breeze, nice and flat. That's all we asked for. And 4G would obviously be great as well. We've just done a mile road walk down the road. And I don't know if you can see the sign, if you can zoom in. Loch Maddy, four miles. So from this point on, this is when we're keeping our eyes, because we're going away from the road, so we're going to keep our eyes peeled for our wild camping spot. Fingers crossed. Oh my God, fingers crossed. Let's go. So um, we've, we've come up that sort of like steep bit and we're looking down ahead and basically all we can see going down, and you can probably see this as well, is fences. And so we're just thinking this is literally the first place that we have come to, which has got any semblance of being an okay wild camping spot. It is in by no means perfect, but I think we can roughly get a tent flattish here, an Adelaide tent flattish here. It is going to be a bit rocking, but to be honest, at this time of the day, you almost just don't care. You just want to get your tent put up and, yeah, do what you need to do. So, yeah, let's go. 6.28. Let's, let's put the tent up and get in the tent. ASAP. What's going on? Oh no, I think you just have to kill them when you're in there. There they are, the little blighters. Okay. Fuck, I've now got to get into my tent. Okay. All right, time to get into the tent. I've done a very quick wee because I will not be leaving this tent. 6.38. Right, let's just get, get the hell in here. You are joking. Adelaide's just lost her muscle. Oh no, she's found it. Okay, so... Me, go away, you fine. I think, more body I think, uh, I think I'm okay. Oh, I don't know if you can see out there. Can you see them? Okay. We've got a few inside, but oh, team, we have done seriously well. Okay, anyway, little update, 6.39, so 6.40 in the evening, 36,325 steps. Wednesday 31st of August, 17, oh my God, itchy head, 17.6 um, miles. Although when I do it on the GPS, it's normally like an extra two miles. So, oh God, okay. Right, let's just, let's just keep calm. Oh, let's not wet the tent with the water hose. That would not be good. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, wow, what a day it has been. Thank you so much for watching the vlogs. Hope you're enjoying them. I'll be providing like top tips and advice um, later on throughout the vlog series where I'll be giving you top tips, you know, is it should you be wearing trainers, should you be wearing boots? I'll also be doing a full review of my Innovate walking trousers, my Innovate top as well, uh, my uh, Innovate Storm Shell jacket. So I'll be going through, um, going through all of that as well and the equipment that I have been using. And I will also be answering any questions that you may have about the Outer Hebrides, especially if this is a walk that you'll be very keen to do. If you haven't already, download the Hiker app. Links are down below. Hiker spelled H-I-I-K-E-R. Especially if you're interested in long distance trails, they have thousands of trails available for you to look through, especially to find your inspiration for your next hike, your next adventure. Okay, that's it from me. Let's hope no mosquitoes mosquitoes or midges get inside this tent oh god there they are in there okay anyway thanks for watching the vlog take care and i'll speak to you soon bye <laughs>